Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the latest episode of In The J-Land. Today I am joined by a former Stagi that was with the club from 2010 to 2013 and after hanging up the boots has gone on to be a global business owner of one of the world's fastest growing fashion brands. Mark Corcoran, welcome to In The J-Land. First and foremost, how are you coping with, with lockdown? Yeah, not too bad to be fair. As you see my dog, I've got two dogs so getting up and having to walk him. Uh, one's a husky, so he requires a lot of exercise. So, um, yeah, um, he's been keeping me busy. Um, other than that, I've still been working from home. Um, we've had put, obviously, everyone that can work from home is working from home, and, and I'm no different. And uh, we've got a few people in the warehouse. So just kind of managing day-to-day -day, uh, the business as well. So that's keeping me busy and uh, occupying my mind. So. To be honest, things haven't really changed that much for me um, on a daily basis. But um, yeah, it is quite a surreal time now, isn't it? It is, and we continue to credit our, our National Health Service for, for seeing us through this period. Mark, yeah, let's, let's go back to 2010. You get your move to Ross County. What, how did it come about? How did you feel about going from Glasgow to Dingwall? Um, it came through um, uh, Martin Corrigan that um, uh, was at Partick Thistle with me at the time and um, just uh, I wasn't particularly happy at Thistle and we played against Ross County, I'd done quite well every time I'd sort of played against them and um, Derek Adams was sort of interested. So yeah, it just came about that way. I spoke to Derek and uh, he obviously sold me on the move. Um, obviously they'd done really well in the Scottish Cup the year before as well, so it was an exciting sort of prospect. So, um, yeah, uh, just came through sort of Martin Corrigan and then obviously meeting Derek and, and George at the time and, and speaking to them. Uh, yeah, you say it was a bit of a it was a bit of a a change going from Glasgow to Dingwall. Um, at the time, I didn't really realise how um, big this sort of change would be. Um, coming from like living in Edinburgh, living in Glasgow and then moving up there, I did find that a little bit difficult, but the football side of things was, was amazing. And obviously, as you said, the, the club was coming off the back of their successful Scottish cap run and, you know, really trying to push the boundaries. Did that make it almost <clears throat> an easy sell for you to come up? Uh, yeah, um, like I'd spoken to Derek as well and he, he'd sort of sold the club to me as well as George. Um, I obviously knew Richie Britton from playing at St Mirren and uh, I knew there was obviously good players up there. Uh, I, I went to the Scottish Cup final as well um, to watch the game and all those Ross County probably didn't do themselves the justice they would have, have liked to in that Scottish Cup final. You could still see the team was at a good side. So yeah, it was an exciting sort of time for Ross County and something I wanted to be part of. And Mark, when you come up to the club, I know that you know we've done a lot of feedback <coughs> 2010 final with it being the 10 year anniversary this year it was a dressing room full of big characters full of let's just say color you know what what was it like sticking in there with with guys that you know weren't quiet that were quite boisterous did that suit you and that was all right to be fair I'd, I'd played in some other sort of mad dressing rooms St Mirren had a, a particularly sort of mad one the year they the, the year we won the league there so I do think that I do think it does help having that sort of that sort of boisterous sort of side to things, it can sort of take your, uh, take sort of not relieve the pressure, but it just gets sort of like some way of like alleviating it as well a wee bit. It's good to have that sort of, you need to be serious when you're serious, but to have that sort of like relaxed sort of jovial side as well, you need a bit of both, I think. And having big characters in any dressing room is good. Did you feel when you, when you got to Ross County that the, the pressure was really on getting the promotion to the Premier League? Yeah, I felt that that sort of um, that it wasn't maybe the pressure. The the first season, obviously, when I came up, wasn't wasn't the best season. Um, I think the pressure of Ross County went from a side that was good to a side that got to the Scottish Cup final, and everyone fought tooth and nail to to beat to beat you. And that was maybe something. Uh, I'll going through different managers because I know Derek went to Hibs to to sort of do what he wanted to do, and that's that's. What people do, do you know what I mean? But I think it just that season was a bit sort of funny because of the high of this previous season, and then maybe getting beat in the Scottish Cup final, and then it just kind of like maybe continued in the next season, and then everyone's trying trying that a little bit harder against you, and, and maybe we didn't cope with that 
quite as well as we should have that year. Um, but yeah, then, then obviously the next season happened and, and it just sort of made, maybe made you better the, the following season, I guess. Um, with obviously Derek coming back and the players had maybe gone through that season and didn't want that to happen again, do you know what I mean? And then just had a bit of renewed vigour with a few of the players they brought in as well. So yeah, um, uh, that, that season, the first season wasn't great after the Scottish Cup final, obviously such a high of doing so well, but then the following season, I think we went, was it 40 games unbeaten or yeah. something after that? So, yeah, that, that was an amazing season to be part of. And, you know, coming up to the Highlands from the, the city, you knew a couple of guys. Who were the guys that kind of stuck tight with you, made you kind of comfortable in the surroundings that you could rely on up here as, as kind of friends more than anything? But to be fair, the whole team was the whole team was good. Do you know what I mean? Everyone, everyone was um, everyone was quite close because, like you say, probably a lot of the boys went through a similar things. They'd come from up in Glas, come from sort of maybe Glasgow or down down the road a wee bit, and then you're all sort of together. That's kind of all you have is the sort of team and stuff like that. So I thought the camaraderie in the team was really good. Obviously, I stayed with. Um, Jason Marr at one point and then like Mark, Fitz, Mark Fitzpatrick as well so obviously I was living with them so I got on well with them but people like uh, Michael Fraser and Colin McMenamin, Rocco Quinn, Barra and stuff like that everyone everyone was everyone was brand new Boydie and, and Richie Britton as well obviously do you know what I mean so yeah I uh, got on with, with pretty much everyone to be fair. And you know, looking back now on on the time you were up here, what what were your fondest memories of being with the club? Because obviously, a lot of time has passed now since since you were here. You must uh, reflect on on when you were here. Yeah, no, it was it, the football was really good. Do you know what I mean? The facilities they had, being able to train at the sort of training at the pitch and that, um, that's not something I'd ever really had. I know when you play professional football, you expect sort of like training facilities, but. Um, St Mirren, like obviously they've got it now, but when I first went, uh, we bounced about from training facility to training facility. Partick Thistle was the same. Hamilton, even they, obviously they had the Astro pitch, but that was different the, the second time. But the first time, obviously they bounced about as well. So actually having like training facilities that you could, that you were on your like part of, next to the stadium and then the indoor as well over winter it was just it was just really really good for a football sense and um yeah all the guys were great and, and that season that we went uh, all those games unbeaten and um no, that was that was great as well and getting promoted and, and being part of the sort of first Ross County team in the Premier League although cut short by injury I think I made four or five four or five games at the start of the season uh, but to be part of the first win in, in Dundee, uh, the Dundee game and that, uh, that was good. It was really good. So obviously disappointing the way it sort of ended with my injury. But unfortunately, they can't. These things can't be be helped. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm more thankful for all the things that that I went through. Like like I say, that that league winning season and um, playing those games in the Premier League. Then I'm disappointed with what happened to the injury. Jack. It's just part of football. It is, and, and it takes a lot to come back from injury as well, Mark. Um, you know, coming coming away from football as your career was winding down, there was something special happened in a, a Glasgow flat that would propel you <laughs> to where you are today. Talk us through the, the beginning of what has become undoubtedly one of the fastest growing fashion brands in, in the world and be inspired. Just, I like, a lot of things are just luck, mate, to be fair. Um, I can't really say I came up with, or either of us came up with any sort of genius plan. Um, I played football, not with Stephen Robb, but um, sort of almost crossed over at St Mirren and then he ended up living with a flat with me just through mutual friends. And then he went to Thailand and um, we just stayed in touch ever since. And we were always like, oh, what could we do after football? We're always trying to come up with sort of little ideas of what, what could we do? And he was in Thailand, so I was thinking, well, there's got to be something over there that we don't have here that we could possibly sell or um, get something at a, a good rate that we could sell over here, just sort of wheeling and dealing a wee bit, do you know what I mean? And um, he found these sort of t-shirts on market stalls out there that were like cheap, just like sort of, I don't know, t-shirts you'd probably get in like a, like a sort of pre-mark or something, do you know what I mean? Just like printed t-shirts. And uh, it was one of his friends that, that owned the sort of stall and made them. So um, but he ended up sending them back and I was, was just selling them uh, on eBay and, and, and stuff like that. 
and um, he got to know the sort of guy that did them really well and he said to me how about we start our own sort of fashion brand and I was like a bit like, I don't know I don't know a bit humming and on to start with and then we just thought oh, we'll just go for it so we started off with I think four designs um, we, we made four designs originally we made them we sort of designed them on our iPhone like right? so they were poor they weren't great I'm not gonna lie um, but they were the best that we could sort of come up with at the time and we made them and we were like oh these are class these are class and um, we sold them on Facebook we gave a few to boys like um, Stephen Naismith and uh, I think Scott Brown and Robert Snodgrass originally and um, they just sold out I think, we'd, I think we had like 25 of each t-shirt to start with and we sold out in a week so we just through a fa- just through Facebook. So we just reinvested all the money and, and um, bought more T-shirts. And we just gradually sort of grew the business from there. And we just reinvested all the money. We created a website. Um, we eventually sort of taught self-taught ourselves Photoshop to to get better. And then we ended up bringing a designer in, and it just sort of snowballed from there, mate. To be fair, never we never thought it would be anything to start with. It was just a bit of a sort of side side hustle, if you like. Um, we'd both gone into recruitment at the time and hated it and um, we were just just doing something to occupy our days really and then like I say it snowballed and grew and grew and grew and then we just kind of went with it and um, just put all our effort into it and and, uh, here we are now to be fair. Was the the fashion thing something that you both felt passionate about for for a long time leading up to it It was just what that was going to look like to take something forward to become obviously a business? Um, I was I was always into a, a fashion. Probably a few of the boys I played with, I say I had a bit of a rascal taste. But I, I always liked sort of clothes, and uh, I liked um, say going out. To be fair, so uh, usually dressing up to go out. So yeah, I was always like, sort of took an interest in it. But um, I wouldn't have said I thought, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up going into that. Like I say some things just happen at the right time and for uh, for the right reason and you get a bit lucky and then obviously through necessity of where I was and working in something I hated, put all my focus and effort into it and um, yeah, it's just become this thing that we've got now. You mentioned obviously that you you tried to get some big backers in, in Stephen Naismith, Scott Brown to be exhibiting the brand for you. Again, that that's really grown and in fact, you've had the likes of now Luis Suarez, Philip mm-hmm. you know, um and Robert Firmino modelling yeah. your I mean that must be just incredible to see and must have great um effect on business for you. Yeah, that, obviously I'm a Liverpool fan, so that, that was even better for me. But um yeah, it came through Andy Robertson, sort of Stephen Robb's done United contact and <clears throat> sort of connections. I don't think they know they knew each other or played with each other greatly but it's just through sort of Dundee United they knew each other and he went down to a Liverpool game and sort of sorted out tickets and they met Philip Coutinho and the the players I think it was actually when he was kind of engineering a move to Barcelona and he had like a he was injured and um he was in the players lounge and Robbo ended up got speaking to him during the game and uh, his brother and they end up just uh, saying we all we had the clothing brand could we send you some stuff and we did, and he liked it, and then it just sort of snowballed for there, Firmino, and then obviously he, Coutinho went to Barcelona, and Suarez and Messi ended up in the stuff as well. So, no, nah, it was it was amazing to see, obviously, as footballers, seeing one of the best players ever to play the game wearing a clothing brand you've come up with. Uh, it, was, it was good. It was really good. Was the transition <laughs> away from, from full-time football going into the business world, did you find that challenging, especially... In, in starting up your own organisation? Um, nah, not really. I found it. We still obviously find it challenging today um, on the business side of things. Um, when we brought a financial director in to help us with that, just solely from a sort of business structure, business side of things, because that obviously means Stephen don't have any expertise in that area. But nah, I, we found it more difficult going from full-time football to working in an office um very rigid very structured um i just i, I didn't enjoy that sitting at a desk um nine to five um yeah i didn't enjoy that at all but what we do now is a bit more creative um we get the same rush of like seeing like sales come through every day like obviously it comes through on your phone when you get a sale and 
just the constant coming through that you get that same rush as of that from when I played football that sort of replaced that but um and and like I say obviously being your own boss you've got like that little bit of flexibility and freedom but because it's because it's ours you end up putting that much more effort into it so you're you're probably working way harder than you ever did in like an office nine to five but because it's something you love it doesn't really feel like you're working do you know? That must be a lot of emails coming through if every sale comes through to your phone. Nah, it's just, it's not like an email, mate. It's just like it just pings up. But yeah, you just, it's, it's good, man. It's good. Um, Mark, <coughs> just as we kind of round up on the, on the business side of it, what, what are the kind of future plans and developments for Be Inspired? You know, obviously you've had great success up to now. How, how do you take it to the next level of what you're trying to do? Well, um, Predominantly two years ago, we were just sold in the UK exclusively, and then we've decided we decided then that for sustainability and long term, we uh, we felt that we needed to be outside the UK. So we sort of started not really put a plan in place again. That's why we brought a financial director in because you know, Robo didn't really have plans. We just just winged it to be honest, and um, we decided that international growth was going to be something we we concentrate on and. Uh, yeah, so from, from then on we've concentrated on growing internationally and we we sell into like we sell into maybe like twenty other countries decently and, and obviously one or two parcels here or there. Um but like Germany, USA, Netherlands, Spain, France, uh, Japan, they are sort of big countries for us and, and international takes up maybe like forty percent of our business now. So um our aim is like the UK is still a massive part of it. But our aim is to just slowly grow internationally more and more and more and um, and yeah and hope that we can get um maybe a few countries on the same sort of level as the uk and, and internationally will overtake the uk so um it'll still be a big part of the business but hopefully international usa europe will be will be just as big excellent and you know i think everyone looks forward to seeing local businesses that that we kind of all have an attachment to seeing growing so we wish you all the best with the development of, of the business yourself and Stephen coming back to the football mark do you ever get the urges that you wish you were still playing do you ever look and say I could do a job for someone there or, or you know I could I could lace his boots <laughs> nah I, I, still, I miss playing I've, I've, I've had my hip be surfaced from obviously my injury so um, it's basically like a sort of partial hip replacement. They just sort of put like a metal cap on the joint, and the so I have to watch what I'm doing. But I have gone and played for my like I have gone and played fives, and I have gone and played for my mates' amateur team. And yeah, I do enjoy it. It's funny maybe get about as well as I used to, and I end up in a lot more pain after the game. But uh, yeah, just it's just nice to get a kick about. Um, as for wishing I still played professional football, um. I, I wish I could still play at places like Ibrox and Parkhead, but I don't. I don't particularly miss um, pr professional football. Do you know what I mean? I like. I've got this, and if I didn't have been inspired, then yeah, maybe I would. But this is uh, totally replaced any sort of feeling of uh, achievement, I guess, or it even feels competitive, I guess. Um, and that's it's been replaced. Do you know what I mean? So I don't. I don't miss. I miss having a kick about, I miss playing with my mates and stuff like that. And yeah, I do miss playing football, but uh, I wouldn't swap it for what I'm doing now at all. Either. So a cold, rainy day at Cup <clears throat> really do it for you nowadays, Mark. Um, well, that's, de that's definitely not selling it to me, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously in your career, Hamilton, St Mirren, um, Ross County, Park Thistle, you play, play you know, some pretty... Um, high figure clubs in Scotland. You must look back on your career now with a great sense of pride that you, you played at a professional level for so long in your career. Yeah, obviously my dad, like any dad says, oh, it feels like you could have done better or whatever. But like, um, I do look back on my career with, uh, with pride because until I was maybe 24, I didn't even play full time. I think I'd not even, not even gone into sort of professional ranks till I was 22. I'd played junior, so I'd gone to university, played junior football. From junior, I went to Hamilton part time, and then Hamilton, I went to St Mirren full time. So, um, yeah, to, to end up playing the Premier League, I feel is quite a good achievement. So, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of my career. And like everyone, you've probably got like, oh, maybe I could have done this better or I could have worked harder. But 
I don't really, I don't really uh, believe that. Uh, sorry, I don't really have any regrets. Do you know what I mean? I just maybe put that into this. Like, don't don't try and have those. Maybe I should have done that a bit more. But there are. So I'll try and put that into be inspired instead now. Um, so I don't have any regrets in this. But yeah, like I, I look back on my career and I've got nothing with but pride of the clubs I played for and what we achieved. It's, I won a, a couple of leagues and a couple of cups. And then, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm quite proud of what happened. And obviously, um, a man that you played with many times in Dingwall, Stuart Kettlewell, now the co-manager. Um, you must look on that with, with great happiness that somebody that you've played with has made the step up to be a manager in the Premiership in Scotland. Yeah, and nah, Kets is a, a really good lad and, and a, a born winner. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really nice to see him and, and Fergie, who got a lot of time for. I thought he was a really good coach when I was up there as well. So, no, nah, I just I, I love to see them do well. and. Anyone you've played with or against, you want to see them and do well and, and achieve good things. But uh, like as I say, Kets is a great guy, a, a born winner. So um, I can imagine what he's like as a manager. So yeah, um, no, I really hope he does well. Mark, just, just as we, we round up the, the interview today, when you look back across your whole career, what, what is the kind of one defining moment? What is the, the standout memory for you across your whole career that that is always there in your head? Um, probably went in the two leagues, one with St Mirren and, and one with Ross County. I think I played in two very, very good sides. Um, I think at the time St Mirren had won the league by a record points margin and then to do it again with Ross County uh, later on, um, yeah, there were two really good football inside. And it, it's funny because when I did it at St Mirren, a lot of people said, oh, remember this, it doesn't come along easy. You just come into football and you've won this league and cherish it. And um, you, 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 you hear them, but you don't really take the advice. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, yeah, it'll happen again. And then it didn't happen. And then to win one right at the end of my career again with Ross County was, was, was pretty sweet. So, yeah, um, I would say those two are obviously highlights uh, of my career. Mark, it's been absolutely brilliant sitting down and speaking with you today. I'm sure the, the fans up here remember you fondly and will really, really enjoy sitting listening to, to the journey that you're on now as well as the journey that you had with the club. So, listen, thank you for taking the time to, to sit down with me today and hopefully we'll see you in Dingwall in the not-too-distant future. No, no worries, mate. Thanks so much. It was a, it was a, a great, great interview and I really appreciate you having me on.